Proverbs 1, from verse 1 to 7. And there we read God's word. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction. To understand words of insight. To receive instruction in wise dealing. In righteousness, justice and equity. To give prudence to the simple. Knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying. The words of the wise and their riddles. And verse 7 is the text for the sermon this morning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. We'll sing after the sermon as response from Psalm 111, the verses 1, 2, and 5. 111, 1, 2, and 5. Beloved congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ, when are you wise? When are you foolish? That's the question we're going to address this morning. The psalmist says the fools say in their heart, there is no God. Atheists, people who deny the existence of God, are foolish. But can you still maintain that in our sophisticated 21st century? The unbelievers can be very educated and knowledgeable. Think of the great advances in science and technology. Are the unbelieving scientists foolish? Isn't it because of their wisdom that they no longer believe in God? Beloved, sometimes we as Christians may feel inferior to modern unchristian scientists. Since the development of modern science, it seems as if they have everything in their favor. Full of self-confidence, they, for example, propagate a theory of evolution as a scientific truth. It is so widely accepted that even many Christians no longer dare to stand up against it and begin to doubt what the Bible says about it. The masses run behind the so-called science and adjust scriptures. What do you still do with the Bible when practicing science today? Or even in the business world? Can you still work with the Bible? Who is wise? As a Christian you don't at all have to feel inferior. On the contrary, God tells us that the Christian who fears the Lord is wise. While those who do not take God into account are foolish. Claiming to be wise, they become foolish, Paul says in Romans 1. And Paul adds, they exchange the truth about God for a lie. And worshipped and served the create creature rather than the creator. And therefore as Christians we can expect to face fierce opposition when we come with God's word. 
in Psalm 14, fools are said to eat up God's people as they eat bread. Today they, so to speak, try to devour the faithful Christians and they seem to be having good success. How many people who call themselves Christians have not given up their resistance and adapted to the current politically correct ideas? Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, you must realise that this is not an issue of faith as opposed to science. We are involved in a battle between two world views. Between faith in God and unbelief. Between the worship of God and the worship of man. What is presented as science is not just a matter of facts as people often suggest. It's usually a matter of interpretation. It's also striking that a Christian scientist makes totally different conclusions than the unbelieving scientist. Let us not as Christians withdraw ourselves from science. We really need Christian scientists in many areas, not only in the natural sciences, but also in the other sciences. If given the opportunity, Christians can make a great contribution to the advancement of science because they know God and in him possess true wisdom. There is no reason to feel inferior. Rather, let us with conviction and confidence take our place in society as God's prophets, priests and kings. Let us in this way help stimulate that God is taken into account in all things and that he is honoured as our mighty creator and redeemer. I proclaim the word of the Lord to you under the theme, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We consider two points. Firstly, the wise take God's words and deeds seriously. And secondly, the fools trust in their own understanding. Or we could also formulate the fool refuses to take God's words and deeds into account. So first, the wise take God's words and deeds seriously. Beloved, the book Proverbs teaches us practical wisdom for everyday life. In chapter 1, verse 2 to 6, this is shown to be the purpose of the book. Proverbs offers wisdom and an instruction to young and old. Verse 4 explicitly mentions the youth with little experience in life. To give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Verse 5 then mentions those who already have wisdom. Let the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance. And after these introductory words, we hear the motto of the book in verse 7, our text. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. This is the main point scripture wishes to teach us concerning wisdom. God thought it so important that he repeated it with slight differences six times in scripture. If you wish to be wise, you must start with the fear of the Lord. But what is meant by the fear of the Lord? 
It means that you're deeply impressed by God's greatness. God is different from us humans, much higher. His majesty is a heavenly majesty. The fear of the Lord is childlike reverence for him. Reverence because of the distance between God and us. He is the holy, majestic God. But also reverence based on the greatness of his love. Yes, beloved, when you fear the Lord, then you reverently bow before his holy majesty. At the same time, you trust in his amazing grace. You recognize something of this in the relationship between children and their parents. If it's a good relationship, you as a child are not afraid of your parents. But you do respect them. And therefore you as a child fear when you have done something against their will. You're not at peace until you've acknowledged it and received forgiveness. This childlike reverence goes hand in hand with childlike trust. This is how it is with the fear of the Lord. You think very highly of your covenant God. Notice the use of the name Lord with capitals. Yahweh. The God who made himself known as the almighty and faithful covenant God. On whom you can always depend. You expect much from his love, but at the same time, you're not indifferent towards his anger. You take him seriously in everything, in his love and in his wrath. When you do that, you take God's words and deeds seriously. How could it be otherwise? Imagine that you'd say that you respect your parents, but that you then ignore their words and actions. Of course, that's ridiculous. Your actions then show that you, in fact, have no respect for them. This also applies for the fear of the Lord. If you have deep reverence for him, then you take all his words and deeds seriously. You try to do what he says in the practice of life. You honour him for what he does and says. You pay heed to it. Beloved, to listen to the Lord with reverence is the beginning of wisdom. After all, in his word, the Bible, we have the richest source of wisdom. Moses foresaw that the heathen nations would say of Israel, God's people, surely this nation is a wise and understanding people. Deuteronomy 4 verse 6. What a wise and righteous laws they have. No wonder. God's people received their instruction directly from the perfectly wise God. And he not only spoke about religious matters, but also about such daily things as work and rest, trade and income, care for the poor, widows and orphans, animal protection, marriage and sexuality, child education, dealing with people, managing money and property, etc. The fear of the Lord, therefore, doesn't lead us away from a normally normal daily practice of life. On the contrary, it leads us right into the middle of true life. The fear of the Lord opens doors to full life. 
It stimulates you to observe and to investigate all the things and structures that God created. This gets you to observe the numerous processes that occur in this colourful world and in society. Yes, it's especially God's children. It's for, especially for God's children an honour to be actively involved in this created world. To practice science. To be busy with legitimate scientific research. Beloved, by listening to God with reverence, we recognise that the world is Father's world. He who fears the Lord therefore honours him as the sovereign creator of heaven and earth. The creator to whom all creatures are subject. Dependent on his laws and arrangements. In everyday things of life, God-fearing people recognise their God and honour him. They respect the order which God put in place. They respect the position God allotted to them. They don't occupy themselves with things that are too great or too marvellous for them. They humbly recognise their human limitations. The limits set by God. God is God. The almighty creator of all life. Well, we humans are only created beings. Respect for the Lord. That's where true knowledge begins. This is not where knowledge ends. But it's a presupposition of knowledge. Wisdom begins with reverence for God and the order he revealed. But isn't this an exaggeration? Surely the unbeliever can still have a lot of knowledge. Think of the tremendous developments in science and technology. If it all depended on believers, we would never have attained such progress. Yet, beloved, it may seem that unbelievers possess much knowledge and wisdom. But is the knowledge not very limited, distorted, one-sided? From below, one can never fully grasp the things of this world. One can only observe certain elements. And then you think you've seen everything. But the most essential things are not seen. And what are those most essential things not seen? This, that God created everything. That he still upholds and governs everything. That God is in control and is carrying out his plan with this world. The power of sin also, also escapes their attention. And that there is salvation and restoration in Jesus Christ. Unbelievers don't see this. And therefore don't take that into account. And that's why their cultural optimism continually smashes to pieces against the harsh reality of life. Although they think they're wise, they see their constructions and ideas fall in ruins. For it is only from above that you can get to see the total picture, the big picture. Can you get to know God and man rightly? God gives you a view from above in his word. He teaches you to see things in the right perspective. He teaches you to take all aspects into account 
so that you don't just take notice of the things you see with your naked eye. So that you get to know your life and what to do with it. Reverence for God leads to true, pure knowledge. And just you as Christian see things other people do not see. You, for example, take into account what Scripture says about creation, about the fall into sin and its consequences, about the flood, the Tower of Babel, the coming of Christ, the death and resurrection of Christ, the outpouring of the Spirit, and Christ's return. You take into account all aspects of the truth, all evidence, and not just things that the atheists consider to be worthwhile. And then you come to totally different conclusions. And you sometimes come up with surprising answers. Beloved, here I'd like to refer you to Christian Ministries. An organisation that can help you to take a Christian stand in a secular scientific environment. In this way, you as a Christian can make an important contribution to the advancement of science. Do you fear the Lord? If so, you've taken the first step towards that wisdom. Should you refuse to fear the Lord, then you become a fool. That's what the text also speaks about. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Beloved, folly in Scripture has nothing to do with poor intellectual abilities. It is the rejection of wisdom and instruction. In the Bible, the fool is someone who perhaps not in theory, but at least in practice, does as though there is no God. No God to whom you have to give account. They are practical atheists. Although they may still call themselves Christians. Fools do not listen to wise counsel. They despise the wisdom that comes from above. Thus they set aside important facts, evidence, and draw premature or absurd conclusions. For example, regarding the origin of the universe, the origin of man. They're wise in their own eyes. They think they don't need God. They can save themselves. According to them, man is in control, not God. Isn't it foolish in this modern age to believe in a sovereign God? No man has to sort it out himself, and he can sort it out himself. Man has the knowledge. That's what fools think. They're not stupid in the intellectual sense, but they behave like fools. They reject the beginning of knowledge, the fear of the Lord. They rely on their own insight. They only consult flesh and blood. That is fa fallible human beings. Beloved, wisdom and instruction teach you to think and live according to God's ordinances. As God has set things in place. The fools reject it. The fool does not accept any authority outside of himself. 
He wants to be his own Lord and Master. And because of this attitude, fools show no respect for the boundaries regarding what is possible and what is legitimate. The fool lacks a true sense of reality. Although he may know and be able to do a lot, he can't really grasp what life is all about. He can't really grasp the things that are going on. Why not? Because he wants to keep the Creator and Redeemer out of the picture. And thus his knowledge remains distorted, fragmentary. It needs to be corrected and amplified by God's instruction. But the few fool refuses this. And that's why he refuses to accept that the universe and life have been created by God. Even though the scientific evidence overwhelmingly points to God. It really is baffling that anybody with a bit of knowledge of our immense and amazing universe would believe that this is merely the result of accidents or chance. The same applies regarding life on earth, especially the life of us humans. In light of the present knowledge regarding the beauty and complexity of life, just think of all the information contained in your DNA. How could anyone not accept that a most wise God designed and created us. But fools refuse to accept any such conclusions. This is the last thing they want to accept or are allowed to accept. Even though the existence, the power and wisdom of God is staring them in the face, in all their research, they choose to suppress the truth rather than to live by it. For accepting God's truth would require them to change their thinking, their friends, their priorities, their lifestyle, their morals. And they're not willing to give up control over their lives in order to do, change those things. Thus the fool is on a dangerous path. As a fool you constantly come in conflict with God's world order. It will ultimately destroy your life. Foolishness is in fact disorder, self-conceit, self-deception. The original sin of man in paradise who declared himself autonomous and wanted to be his own God and master. And brothers and sisters, this folly largely determines the spirit of our time. It's especially since the so-called enlightenment that we're confronted with a strong movement of rationalism. It teaches that the ratio, the human reason or the human mind has supreme authority. Your mind is master. It's autonomous and sovereign. And this dangerous enemy also found its way into the churches and misled its thousands or millions. Many people today think that the authority of the Bible does not rise above the authority of the human mind. But that the reverse is true. The authority of the human mind or so-called science would be higher than that of the scriptures. The human mind then determines what is true and what is not. What is acceptable and what is not. And thus you get the liberal views that are being propagated in name of Christianity. For example, the view 
that you must not take everything written in Scripture all too seriously. The Bible would only be a book constrained by its time of origin. We have now progressed further in our knowledge. And therefore you should not take Genesis 1 to 3 too seriously. Or what Paul writes about the position of men and women. We know better today. Even the sinfulness and depravity of the natural man is explained away. And God's omnipotence. Brothers and sisters, as opposed to this great lie, we confess the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or knowledge. All that autonomous reasoning of man is foolishness. People grope around in the dark. They may think that respect for God's word hinders them in their development. But the very opposite is true. The fear of the Lord is the way to true knowledge and wisdom. It allows you to understand the complex reality of life. In Father's world, God opens an unfailing and infallible source of wisdom. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, tomorrow you hope to return to your daily work and study. You have to make progress in your knowledge and experience. But remember that the prerequisite for all this is that you are serious about God's words and works. That you listen to the Lord and serve Him. To live and work like this can cause much resistance and ridicule. Of course, the modern emancipated world thinks it knows better. And they present their knowledge as science, as facts that one cannot deny. But don't be fooled. Don't be intimidated. They're deceiving themselves. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. They exchanged the truth about God for the lie. And worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is to be praised forever. Be thankful that you may know the Lord and love him. And that you thus may possess the beginning of true knowledge and wisdom. Along this path you receive a far and wide view. A view that reaches into the eternal city of God. You may see much more than those who do not believe. You may see the big picture. Yes, in all the human chaos and misery, you may see God actively pursuing the redemption of a lost world.